Hi, Adam Bazalgett back here in Naples, Florida. I'm two-time PGA Teacher of the Year Award winner, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Today's subject, an important one, how to putt better in golf. What are some general thoughts that would make you a functional putter? Stay tuned. So how to putt better in golf? Well, hey, listen, if you can two putt consistently and make a couple of putts now and again, if your average is less than two, you're a pretty functional putter by most people's standards. I'll show you something today in this video that you've really got to be able to do regards distance control. That's kind of the underpinning of that level of putting. And also another thing at the beginning of the video is to how to clear your mind a little bit, how to make it simpler so you can really put your mind on the things that count there. If you like the video, please hit a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel. We'd love to get you more free content. ScratchGolfAcademy.com is my home website. Have full courses in every as aspect of the game and a full course on putting. Love you to check that out. Okay, let's get started. Okay then, so if you're gonna putt better in golf, we're talking about really getting to be functional and a reasonable at least two putter, you have to have good distance control. If you don't have good distance control, and if you're not really cozying it up there on the longer putts, you're gonna have some problems with being a functional putter. Now, two things I wanna show you here in this video that I think will be helpful to that. First thing, I should say the second thing and the most important thing is some ideas about distance control that I think you'll like. But firstly, your mind's got to be pretty clear if you're going to focus on distance control. So for that, the stroke has to be simple. Let's touch on a couple of things here you want to avoid and a couple of things you want to emphasize. And then we can talk a little bit about distance control. So first thing is these little hand and arm muscles, the more you try to manage and control your stroke with those, the more challenging it becomes to control the putter and the more the more your mind is gonna be engrossed with that. So here's my tip for that. Grab your putter there in front of you and just pull it in there where your arms touch your ribs a little bit. So there's a little fold of the arms, you feel a slight connection there. That is very, very important because once you've connected to your ribs, you can start to move more from your core for your stroke and not out here with your hands and arms. Think of taking a photograph with a camera, you'd rest your arms on your ribs there. So do that, grab your putter if it's in front of you, touch it up against your ribs, and then make a few strokes here at about level, at about tummy high, and you'll start to feel, hey, if you keep your, your legs and head still and get a little energy from your core, you don't have to think about anything. And best of all, it's super repeating. The stroke isn't gonna wobble all over the place. So once you've felt that, tip over there, make a couple of strokes there, and just engage your core and maintain that connection. So there's absolutely no active hitting or controlling from the hands. And just hit a few putts without a target till you're starting to feel that. Once you're there, not only will that help your accuracy in putting, but again, it frees up your mind to work on distance control. So let's have a look at a couple of thoughts about distance control then. So to have good distance control, that was about the right speed. Obviously it affects the break on shorter putts, but it affects how close to the hole you get, especially on longer putts. Crucial if you're gonna be an effective putter. To have good distance control, you have to have a couple of repeatable elements. And the number one repeatable element to me is a pendulum type motion. Now what's critical about a pendulum type motion, first off, it's natural. You're always gonna do better in golf if you do things that are natural. You can learn to do things that are counter instinctive and unnatural if you practice enough, but you're better off with natural. And things are naturally prone to swing in pendulums. That's just the way things work. I'll show you a great little drill here in just a moment that I think will bring out the natural within you. But instead of thinking how hard to hit putts, just trust a pendulum. A pendulum not only has equal back and through, of course, but the pendulum, the beauty of it is the fastest spot is right at the bottom, right where contact would be if you're using a pendulum. This is what the best players are doing. So again, get into something that's natural, physiologically or physically, I suppose, a pendulum's a natural thing. Get into that flow. And let me show you a little drill here that I think will demonstrate to you that this is something you do in everyday life or at least in certain act athletic activities. Okay, so I've got three tennis balls here. Let's say I'm just playing a little game of underhand toss to a friend there. I'm not gonna take the ball back and try to throw it the right distance. What I would do is just kind of get a measurement there with my toss and then just let the ball go. And you would find there is a natural buildup of speed and you'll find if it's anything close to natural that you're gonna release that ball right around here at the vertical point of your arm, right here at somewhere near the bottom. You're not gonna release it over here. In other words, you're 
fastest point isn't going to be there or back here. It's a natural thing to build up speed, release the ball, and then again, you find we don't try to keep accelerating the arm. That would be very unnatural. Once the ball's out of the hand, the arm naturally just draws to a, a natural conclusion and slows down naturally. And the less you think, if you had a friend out there, the more naturally you'd find that sort of pendulum motion there and get that swinging motion. You'd have a sense of how far you had to throw it, but you wouldn't be thinking about rhythm or acceleration or anything like that. It's a very natural movement. Okay, so pretty natural really. Now, how are you gonna apply that to your golf? Well, grab your putter again if it's with you. You've already practiced the kind of motion, taking your hands and arms out. Here's the best starting drill I know, and that is to make several putts in a row or several strokes in a row, I should say, without stopping. And you'll find after five, six, seven strokes, you naturally start to balance out to a pendulum. I have yet to see the person making continuous strokes that has one end way bigger than the other. That doesn't happen. So just make some strokes till you take all the thinking out of it. You're starting to feel your rhythm. You're feeling that natural flow of the pendulum, which again is a natural thing. And then the next thing I would do, and I'd recommend it without a target. I've got one, uh, hole out there to add a little visual interest here, but see if you can hit three putts in a row without taking much time the same length or very close to the same length. And then on the next go vary it, maybe make it a much bigger putt or a somewhat shorter putt and just see if you can roll balls consecutively the same length. That would demonstrate to you your rhythm is very, very consistent and repeatable. So let's roll a couple over there. Get over here, have a little look. And I'm not trying to control my distance. I'm just getting in there and just feeling the same energy, the same size pendulum in each stroke. Obviously those are a hair low, but you can see they went pretty much the same distance. That's your benchmark. So get your stroke if you want to become a better putter, a functional putter. Get your stroke where it's simple, where your mind is calm and relaxed. Then it can focus on good visualizing, good distance control, and develop a pendulum and apply it to different sorts of putts. One little thing to remember, one final point here that's very, very important. The rhythm of your pendulum, if you had a metronome out that's, let's say, tick, tock, whatever that rhythm is should be the same regardless of the length of putt. So if it's a much longer putt, if it was twice that long, I'm gonna have a bigger stroke with more energy, so tick, tock becomes tick, tock. Always that same rhythm. Picture tossing the balls. If I'm tossing it to someone a few yards away, this toss, if they're a lot further away, more energy, same kind of rhythm. So it's still a pendulum, it has the exact same rhythm. Your mind gets good at that. And just adjust it a little for how far the ball should go. And again, it frees up your mind because you're not thinking about how hard to hit it. You're just looking at it, getting a good mental picture, find your pendulum and just go with it. I think if you'll do these things, you'll really start making yourself a more functional putter. Well, I hope that was helpful for you. Again, I have a full course on putting, covers every aspect of putting, green reading, strategy, practice, etc., etc. I hope you'll check that out at scratchgolfacademy.com. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Got a lot of content and plan to bring a lot more your way. I appreciate your attention and your interest in my videos. Thanks.